<laughs> Guys, this is one of a dream pistols or one of the dream pistols that I have always wanted to shoot. This is a high standard Supermatic trophy. Let's get into the video. You will never understand or <laughs> know what may show up on my channel. I may show a brand new rimfire or I may show one that's 100 years old, but this is a dream pistol for me to shoot. This is the um, high standard Supermatic trophy. And uh, I guess probably about a week or two ago, I uploaded a short to Instagram and Facebook and YouTube explaining something about this gun that I am borrowing from a good friend of mine. So here's the video. So my buddy is allowing me to borrow his 1958 high standard Supermatic Trophy 22 Olympic style pistol. This thing is crazy looking and it has one of the best triggers I've ever felt in any pistol. So before I give it back to him, I think I want to have it drilled and tapped and put a red dot on it and kind of surprise him before I give it back to him just to tell him thank you for allowing me to borrow his awesome pistol. What do you guys think? Should I have it drilled and tapped or not? A lot of you freaked out that I would actually put or drill and tap and put a red dot on this gun. Um, I actually took it one step forward and took a picture and put it on Instagram and Facebook that I actually drilled and tapped it, but I didn't drill and tap it. Actually, if you look really, really close, you can see the double-sided sticky tape holding that optic on there. But in no way, shape, or form would I ever do anything to a treasure like this, an antique. You just leave it alone and shoot it. But my buddy has let me borrow this for the video. I've always wanted one of these. And if you're unfamiliar with the Supermatic Trophy, I think this is the second most expensive a uh, high standard that that was actually produced. I think the Olympic was the, the most expensive. This is the trophy one right underneath there. And it does have some weights right here on the front. They came with two different size weights. Depending on what year you bought the firearm, you would have a round weight or a squared weight. Uh, this was actually produced the first year in 1958 and they produced them all the way to 1963. They made several barrel links, I think one in like five and a half, six and seven, I think six and three quarter, an eight inch, and also a 10 inch. This particular one is an eight inch. So let's just do a little bit more shooting. <clears throat> all right, I know you guys are gonna wanna go way out there at 100 yards on a four inch plate. Let me see if I can hit it a few times. This gun does get very heavy to hold after you've been holding it a while. So let me see if I can hit it at least once. There we go, fourth or fifth shot. It's a little bit harder to hit longer or smaller distances at a range, open sights. I used to do it all the time, but past couple years, I just went with red dots and it's much easier. All right, so this particular firearm came with two 10 round magazines. This one seems to run just fine. The one I'm putting in here now, it needs to be replaced. The spring's worn out in it. Let's see if I've got like five or six loaded up here. Let me see if they will actually fire. Hey, it ran fine. So. When I first got the gun, the magazines were all gumped up. And honestly, if you have never used this stuff, this Otis Dry Lube, uh, wow. It does a wonder for your magazines if they're gummed up or waxed up. Spray some of that Dry Lube in there, it cleaned it right up. But it does come with a very futuristic, I guess back in the 50s, muzzle brake right here. And this is, uh, you can actually take this muzzle brake off. It got a couple set screws and it does have adjustable target sights. These are really, really good target sights. The sight picture on this thing is extremely, extremely crisp, and it comes with beautiful walnut grips with the high standard logo right on the side. I love these old high standards, especially the upper end high standards, uh, because what you get is a, uh, I, I think they called it a super finish or a super gloss finish. Uh, other people would call it a high gloss finish, but uh, they just look beautiful and since they were only made for five years they are becoming quite the collector's item now 
And the cool thing about this particular gun is sometimes it would come with a two barrel set. If you're watching this video, you may have one with a two barrel set with a shorter barrel and different weights. But this one actually came in the original oak wooden box. So not all of them came in a oak presentation box, but this particular one did. I'm gonna load up 10 more rounds of CCI green tag. And a lot of people, a lot of people, it's a big misconception um, that you can't shoot low velocity out of a, um, an old gun like this. Some people say, no, you don't need to shoot high velocity. Some people say, you don't want to shoot low velocity. Here's my rule of thumb. Going under power, shooting an old firearm like this, and if it cycles and cycles reliably, you can't go wrong. Now, if you take an old gun, usually after they're manufactured around 1938, and you try to shoot some high velocity, before 1938, if you try to shoot some high velocity through it, uh, you could end up damaging the firearm but you can't go wrong with low velocity. The low velocity stuff may not cycle out of some of these guns, but you can't go wrong shooting low velocity out of an older gun, but you can mess a gun up if you do shoot high velocity out of it and it's not made for it. All right, what can we do here? All right, let's go, let's go across the creek, 50 yards. Got that one. All right, let's try to get that little plate at 75 yards. There we go. All right, this pistol is extremely accurate. And with these style of grips, like I mentioned before, these are the target grips. A lot of people back in the 50s when they were shooting bullseye, they were shooting the one-handed matches, okay? Like this, okay? So these grips, you can shoot one-handed, but you know, just like my Colt Woodsman, the exact same grips, I am shooting it two-handed. Let's try it one-handed. <clears throat> Let me load up a few more rounds here. Some green tag, but I am serious about that dry lube. This pistol wouldn't even, it, it wouldn't even cycle when I first got it. Put some of that Otis dry lube in there. That stuff is a lifesaver. And uh, you guys actually recommended that uh, somebody a couple of years ago. You said, you need to try some of that Otis dry lube. It's, a, it's amazing on magazines and guns, especially if you shoot a firearm that is suppressed and you get all that carbon. Well, if you use regular oil, regular lube, that carbon kind of sticks to it and uh, it, will, it will cause the gun to malfunction and get extremely dirty. With that dry lube, you don't have that problem as much. All right, let's try it one-handed. I did have a nice big glass of sweet tea earlier and I am a little shaky this morning but I'm already making excuses. All right, let's go out at 60 yards. Ooh, that's a little target to hit out there at 60 yards. Let's go at 100. All right, not too bad for one-handed. Little shaky this morning. Let me load up another magazine. And I don't know if you've ever shot a high-end, high standard. In my opinion, I would compare them to Colt Woodsman's. Okay, the trigger on that thing breaks at about two pounds or maybe about one pound, 14 ounces. But it's extremely light and it is wide, so your trigger finger has a really good um, surface pressure on that trigger. It's not real skinny, like a lot of your target pistol, it's real wide, so it actually feels lighter than what it is. But I grew up shooting a high standard. Maybe you watched a, a video a couple of months ago that I put out about uh, my first pistol I ever shot, first 22 pistol I ever shot was a high standard. It wasn't this nice, it was just regular, the, the uh, 101, M101. This is the Supermatic Trophy. All right, there is a soda can up there at 100 yards. I'm gonna try to hit it. I don't know if I can hit it. Whoever had this pistol before me, or the guy that has this pistol and shot it for years and years, his sight picture is just a little bit different than my sight picture. I'm having to hold low left. I'm having to hold it about seven o'clock on my target. But if this was mine, I would already adjusted the sights. Okay. That one felt kind of weird. Slow down, Dave. 
Oh, I hit it. It kind of busted open a little bit. I think I grazed it. But a Coke can at 100 yards. All right. So what else can we talk about? It is a cool piece of rimfire history. Comes with, of course, it shoots 10 round magazines. And for 22 collectors like myself, getting the opportunity to actually shoot a gun like this is pretty neat. High Standard made really good rimfire pistol. They made some very low end and they made some really high end that are just beautiful and would look good in anyone's collection. So I think that's all I can say about it. It's going to hurt giving this one back. I've seen some prices on the internet go for $2,000, $2,500 for a pistol like this, but it's a little rich for my blood right now, but hopefully one day it will be in my collection. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions whatsoever, just tell me some of those old stories about the high standards you used to shoot. Until next time, y'all be safe and keep plinking. Mm -hmm.